Distinguished guests, it's really, as Yossi said, an honor and a privilege to host you here at the Hebrew University. I will say, with your permission, just a few words about the Hebrew University. It's actually a special year this year because a hundred years ago, exactly a hundred years ago, in 1918, the cornerstones for the Hebrew University were laid. Now, a hundred years may not sound a lot, but a hundred years ago, there was absolutely nothing here. There was the old Jerusalem and just about nothing else, and the university was established. And, of course, we are very proud of it. It contributed greatly to the establishment of Israel. We take credit at the fact that Israel is now a modern country, and I think we contributed quite a bit by educating all those generations of students that later helped establish the country. Uh, over the years, we've, all, we've also become, I believe, a good university. We have, in the history of the university, eight people that won the Nobel Prize, one that won the Fields Medal, and numerous other prizes as well, so we are very uh, proud of the fact that we have really a leading research university and the Brain Center that you are visiting right, right today is just one good example of the excellent research centers that we have here. We have, in addition to the campus here, we have a campus in Mount Scopus. We have a medical campus in another part. And as I told you, we also have an agriculture faculty in Rehovot near uh, Tel Aviv. We call it agriculture and, evi and environment faculty, but it's really a high-tech agriculture campus that we are also very, very proud of. So all in all, I'm actually privileged to be a president of this uh, institution. Uh, when it comes to Germany, 
it's really special. The Hebrew University has a very extensive relationship with a number of German institutions. We have, for example, two projects with Fraunhofer, we have projects with Leibniz, we have projects with Helmholtz, we have projects with the Max Planck Institute, and we have many, many, many connections with universities all over Germany, with a special partnership with the Freie Universität in Berlin. And all in all, I think, I looked yesterday at the data, and I think we have some 500 collaborations right now going on with Germany. And it's changing all the time. It's really, really, really flourishing. And we are very happy to have such an extensive relation with, uh, with, it, with Germany. So I, I don't want to get into all the details of this, because Yossi told me that it has to be a short speech. Uh, I will say that we also have many plans for the future. And I'll just give you two examples to get you an understanding of what we have in mind. One is simple. As I said, we have this relationship with the Freie Universität, and we are trying now to establish a virtual campus so that we can not only visit each other, but really digitally collaborate all the time. We have joint teaching programs, we have joint research programs, and when we establish this particular virtual campus, we'll really advance this thing quite greatly, and we hope very much that this will happen soon. We actually have a pilot already going on in this respect as well. And one thing, just to mention it so that uh, you'll have it in mind, we are here at the Brain Center. You came from the, st you climbed up the stairs to get into this Brain Center. On the other side, there was actually empty land. This empty land is going to be in three years from now, I hope, a high-tech park. We have 30 dunams there that we are going to establish in them high-tech parks where we are going to house many high-tech and biotech companies. And we hope very much that maybe in the future some German companies will be there as well, just as we host within this campus a, a branch of Merck, uh, a German company in the campus as well. So I think that it's not only that the present is good, we are looking forward to a rich future in which we have many collaborations with Germany. So once again, I know, I know, I'm finishing. Uh, thank you very much for visiting us. I hope you have a great visit. And I'm looking forward into the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Asher. Uh, ministers, next time you come, we'll take you visit the archives of the founding father of this university. You probably heard the name Albert Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein archives are less than 200 meters from here, where you can see the original theory of relativity and another 82,000 documents of Albert Einstein, of course, alongside with other German and Austrian Jews, Sigmund Freud, Martin Buber, all the founding fathers of this university. Uh, Minister of Justice, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, um, dear President, dear colleagues, dear guests and friends. Um, my speech will be a lot shorter, I guess. I try. Uh, it's a great honor for us to be here today. Um, we are still under the impression of uh, having just uh, visited Yad Vashem. Uh, the friendship between our countries is, is a very special one because of the Shoah and our responsibility um, that we still feel very strongly. And um, it is very important for us to, to always remember um, this responsibility. But it is just as important to see the present and to see the future. And the present and the future is a lot of cooperation, is exchange, is exchange between youth, between workers, between students, between scientists. And it's um, working together 
um, for the for the well-being of our economy, but also for the well-being of our relationship as a whole, as countries and as nations. So um, we're really, really very happy to be here in this uh, in this uh, following to be at Yad Vashem first and to be here now because it's the past and and the present and the future that represents these, these institutions. So, um, we're very impressed, um, first of all, to be here in the Jubilee year, and then to see what you have built. Now, we've seen the, the walls, first of all, and the buildings. We're going to see more, and we're going to learn more. Israel has an outstanding um, level of science and research, and um, we are very keen to learn more and to learn more together. Um, we're very happy to have this high level of cooperation that you mentioned, Mr. President, um, between our institutions, and we're hoping to improve that even more. Uh, not so much on my playing field, the justice, maybe too, but also a little, lot more. We have the colleagues here who are, who are um, interested in very um, concrete questions. So we know that... Um, science and research is the base for the wealth of the Israeli society and to see what you've built here in the last decades is so impressive. So uh, thank you again for having us here. Thank you for um, having us share your progress and hopefully it will be our common progress in the future. Thank you. Uh. We're not going to send you empty-handed, so I want to ask the president of the university to offer you the Hebrew University Bible. Let me just say, so you'll see a few words about the Bible, because when people think about the Bible, they think that there is one, one Bible. But actually, a Bible is an evolution over many, many, many years of different writings. <coughs> And the researchers at the Hebrew University in the humanities established one version that is so-called the authentic version of the Bible that is right here. And it became the official Bible of Israel. So the president of Israel, when is he, and maybe hopefully in the future she, will be sworn, uh, they are sworn on our Bible. So, very much. Here is this Bible for you. And this is, this is our symbol right here. It's actually two letters combined together. One is for university, universita, and one was for the Hebrew, ivrit, mm -hmm. together merged in this symbol for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And next time you come, there's a test on the Bible. <laughs> I have the pleasure of asking uh, my friend, Professor Eli Nelkin, the uh, director of this impressive center. Well, uh, distinguished ministers, President of the University, Rector, Vice Presidents, everyone, welcome. I'm usually talking in front of scientists, uh, students, sometimes donors. That's the first time that I'm speaking in front of uh, actual government ministers, and so many of them. So, let me start. Liebe Gäste, seien Sie willkommen im Goodman Gebäude, dem Sitz des Edmund und Lili Safat Zentrum für Neurowissenschaft. Well, that was the longest sentence I've ever said in Grant. <laughs> so my goal here in the next five minutes is to tell you a little bit about the science done at the Safra Center. Uh, brain sciences is an all-encompassing term. It covers today substantial parts of biology, much of psychology, some philosophy, and one of our special strengths areas in physics and computer science. So I would like to discuss what we do uh, in four points. First, what are we trying to understand? People often say that we don't understand how the brain works. I think this is wrong. To a large extent, we actually do understand how the brain works, and I'm going to tell it to you now. 
Okay, so there's a mass of network composed of neurons and other cell types inside the, mostly in the head, but also in other parts of the body. They talk with each other using a mixed language of chemistry and, uh, and uh, electricity that we understand, understand surprisingly well. And out pop emotions, consciousness, art, religious, art, war, atrocities, and all the other things that make humanity, humankind great. That's it. <laughs> so this brings me to the second point. Okay, so if we understand how the brain works, what do we actually not understand? And uh, this is a crucial thing. We don't understand this out-pop function. Take into example emotions. There's no general agreement even for what emotions are. Uh, because most emotions are hard to define and even harder to elicit in controlled conditions. It's not for nothing that by far the best understood emotion is fear. Okay? You say boo to an animal and it freezes. Okay? This is easy. Okay, uh, it's easy to do, easy to measure, and then you have a function that you can actually study. But to define a function, you don't start with the neurons. You start with behavior, you start with defining inputs and outputs by showing what are the transformation that needs to be done to go from one to, a, to another. This requires making links. Links between psychology and biology, as well as forming theories, how the biological material performs this computation. That's a bit part of the uh, mind-body problem. Okay, so two brain science is interdisciplinary by definition. And this brings me to my third point. So what do we do at LSEC about it? Here's a concise, concise history. Sometimes in the 1980s, the realization that brain sciences should be a joint interdisciplinary attempt to understand the brain crystallized into an actual program. Now, there was a zeitgeist. This actually happened all over the world at about the same time, but with all modesty, Israel took an important lead in the formulation of that program. At Hebrew University, this led, starting in the early 1990s, uh, to the creation of a voluntary association of biologists, psychologists, physicists, and computer scientists that called itself the Interdisciplinary Center for Neural Computation, ICNC. And the SAFRA Center, where we are today, is actually ICNC on steroids. It was founded in 2009. Uh, we are just at the beginning of its 10th year now. And it uh, en uh, 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 encapsulates this type of uh, collaborative work. So what do we try to achieve? We want more science that integrates across levels from molecular through networks to system neuroscience and cognitive psychology. But crossing levels require theory, and crucially, ELSEC integrates theory with experiments. And how do we do it? So one important thing is the intangible. It's the ethos of ELSEC. We collaborate. Israeli labs tend to be relatively small. This is both a dis disadvantage when competing head to head with large international labs, but it allowed us over the years to use something that they sometimes call the economy of small scale, to reconfigure collaborations as needs and interests evolved. And ELSEC is filled with this type of collaboration. Some of them natural, some of them are, uh, occur in a surprising, uh, 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 by making surprising connections. We work on developing and strengthening this ethos in a number of ways, by providing seed grants for collaborations, by faculty meetings where we discuss uh, our science among ourselves, and these tend to be very fractious, after all, we are Israelis. And as you will see later, by designing a building whose essence is to get groups to meet each other. And it works. And the scientists publish extremely well, get prizes and all, all the rest. And then we have a teaching program. We raise the best and brightest students, after they finish their bachelor degree, into scientists who can talk multiple scientific languages. Now, we don't want to educate interdisciplinary scientists. That's not the goal. You need two fits very well grounded in a discipline in order for your head to reach the clouds. And, uh, but to, to reach the clouds, we want these people, these young, young scientists, to be able to communicate and work together. So for the first two years of their graduate studies, they learn all the languages, biology and psychology and physics and computer science. And they need to excel in their courses. And then they go to the labs and do research often with more than one advisor, and it works well again. ELSA graduates today fill university, Israeli neuroscience, and many of our graduates have positions also in the best universities of the world. Last point. 
I want to talk about being in a university, part of a universe. This has a, a, a number of different facets. First, international collaborations, as uh, uh, has been already uh, discussed here. Germany holds a special place for many of us in, uh, in uh, international uh, uh, collaboration. This is due to the very high level of neuroscience in Germany. I think I can safely state that German neuroscience is almost as good as the Israeli but also uh, to the high level of fiscal support that you can get through different binational grant uh, programs. Money attracts quality. But universality is much more than that. We are committed with the rest of the university to be an inclusive home for everyone who wants to study and do research. This means all parts of Israeli society. We have students that cover almost the full spectrum of Israeli society, ultra-Orthodox and secular, Sephardi and Ashkenazi, new immigrants and old Israel, Jews and Arabs. Universality means accepting international students. We teach an international audience in English. And while we don't do politics, we do want to use science as a tool for communication. As we speak, Jonathan Levenstein, a member of ELSEC, is running a summer school, well, it's October, so maybe it's an autumn school, called NeuroBridges in Cluny, France, where Israeli, Arab, and Iranian students participate and cooperate in learning and practicing computational neuroscience. So, this is us. Thank you all for listening, and again, welcome. Well, ministers, we are also uh, very proud to have among our doctors, honorary doctors, the president of Germany, Mr. Steinmeier, and the chancellor of uh, your great country, and uh, what we are going to do right now is we're going to go upstairs to the courtyard where Ellie, for a second, will put his scientist hat aside and we'll talk about the building. So please follow us through the... Talk.